Hi. Hello. Welcome to Podcast 451, the podcast where we won't talk about anything dirty or pervy because no. someone's parents watch the show. <laughs> so this is the well, super clean show. Sort of clean. You don't have to go crazy about it. It's no, I, I, I won't. I won't go super clean. It's impossible. Hi, everybody. Well, that, Welcome that's... to episode two. <laughs> Girl, I'm going to make fun of you and then say hello to everybody. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm Creep. Hello. Hi, Creep. Hi. And who Hi, are Zoe. you? Hi, Zoe. How are you doing? Hi. <laughs> Zoe. What do you do? Uh, what do I do? Uh-huh. Hello, um, folks. I was going to say all sorts of stupid shit right there. Um, I am a writer and all sorts of other stuff. Um, we will say entertainer. I entertain. You're allowed to be confused, everybody, looking at him at this precise moment. Ah! Just about anything. Yeah. Um, I'm scared, so you're bound to be. Yeah, Mike said um, that he wants an audio version of this show because you're the only thing that's worth looking at. So I I'm, well, I I I'm tricking it out a little bit here. More fool him, eh? What's that? More fool him. You showed him, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, look at me. I got my, my Robin gear on, so maybe some nice older gentleman will want to play Batman with me. And, yeah. Um, yeah. It's cool. kind of like the Heath Ledger Joker version of Batman. You're doing that kind of smudgy version. Yeah? Yeah. Well, it was a, it was a quick smudgy thing because, see, I thought you wanted to have a meeting before we started the episode. <laughs> so I finished Creepers and Cast and then ran into the bathroom and went <laughs> real fast. And then I ran out here and got on the computer. And I'm like, hello. 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 <laughs> And you weren't anywhere to be found for, like, a long-ass well, time. <laughs> only because I was really busy. That's I cool. Was draw- I was drawing and stuff. I wasn't just sitting, you know, doing nothing. Oh, what were you drawing? We'll talk about that later, because that's not on my agenda till later on. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't even have the full agenda. You just have the first half of the agenda. Oh, my God. What are you trying to do to me? Trying to you know like keep you on the... What's that? You know I like organization. I don't like this fly by the seat of your pants kind of crap. Oh, no one flies by the seat of their pants. That's just You a, do? That's a sane. Mm. Okay, yeah. So. Okay, so, anyway, um, we could probably start the show now. That, that seems pretty normal, right? Okay. Okay, so... um. How how's reading books coming? Have you gotten any farther along in anything, or have you started no. anything new? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, I, have. I was just feeling with you. Well, last week I mentioned that you'd recommended Breakfast of Champions to me. Um, Yay! I Literally this morning, I had an hour to kill, so I read the first two chapters, and I love it. It's so Absolutely good. I huh? love it. I love the way he writes. I love everything about it. It's great. I'm going to love it. And I'll just do a little quick drawing for you. This is the, the bit, bit that made me laugh. Can you see that? <laughs> what, what's that a drawing of? That is an asshole. For those of <laughs> you who right. don't know. <laughs> Made me laugh. You know what's so, so funny? Gonna... Well, I, I drew that too a bunch of times the first time I read it. Did you? <laughs> it must be the bit that stands out, and you just like, yeah, that's quite good. It's just, it's so easy to read. I love it. 
So I'll report back next week when I'm a bit more into it and I'm a bit more familiar with the characters. Because I've just met the first two, you know, the main two characters, literally just met them, so I couldn't really tell you much about them yet. But it, it's got a lovely feel to it. I'm loving it so far. I'm actually reading it right now, too. So, um, yeah. <gasps> we have two viewers. <gasps> that is pretty awesome. That means That's there brilliant. are two people watching this show right now. <laughs> and it's live. That's great. I think we might know. I think I might know who one of them is. <laughs> I'm not going to embarrass them. <laughs> I'm not going to embarrass them, but if it's you. Well, I mean, I, I think I'm doing a good job of embarrassing everybody right now, so. Yeah, no, you're scaring people. That's different. What? What you need. You need to be in, like, water like that. And that would be quite a... Uh... Just with my hands? <laughs> no, in water. Like that, water. Like, apocalypse oh, apocalypse now joke. Got it. Yeah. yeah got it. Yeah. We're we're on we're on right, top of our on. game here. You want me to go so underwater? You, you... No, don't please don't. Okay. I'm actually what, also doing? reading Breakfast of Champions right now again. Yeah, you said that. Are you just are you reading anything else other than that or not? <sighs> um. Kinda. Um, <laughs> Cheers over here too. Um, I actually just uh, downloaded um, "Fat Vampire" by Johnny B. Truant, so um, I'm gonna start reading that. It's a four book series, um, and I guess it's about a a guy who becomes a vampire, but he's super fat, and so he can't like oh, man, chase so everybody. Fantastic. Like every like the other vampires can and stuff oh, like that. that. Sounds brilliant. And who's that? Johnny B. Truitt. He's he's from the self publishing podcast. He's on the self publishing podcast and Better Off Undead. And he did. Um, you know what? I'll fucking totally pimp his shit out right now. Um, him and it's really, Sean. It's a really useful podcast, isn't it? The self publishing. It's so podcast. good. Um, yeah. But if you're like me, you might not understand bits of it. <laughs> uh, the first thing of his I read was this book of him and uh, Sean Platt. And can you see this? Oh, this looks great on there. I should do this all the time. Oh, God, that looks brilliant. Yeah. Okay, so Space Shuttle, right? It's super short. Yeah. Um, it's a pilot that they did like four or five pilots where they were going to try to do these funny little... Um, <clears throat> What what should my house? It's like little stories or whatever, and then if the fans liked them and stuff, um, they were gonna make a bunch more or whatever. And um, I got that, and I fucking sat down and read it. I read the whole thing in like one sitting. It was so freaking funny, and it's so cool. And it's it like honestly like uh, I think the the title and the cover don't really do it justice to what it's about, but it's basically about this guy who ends up in this uh, planet somewhere and the planet is like littered with characters that you will recognize as they start going from other stuff, but they're not going to straight out say like, oh, this is Predator, this is Alien, that's E.T., that's Darth Vader. They don't like come right out and say oh, it. <clears throat> but it's just like there are these characters and yeah. um, they they work at like a, a, a taxi service. And it's just, it's fucking hysterical. It's really yeah, funny. Yeah, that, that sounds cool. And, um, but like, so they wrote the first one and so I'm like sitting here going, oh, I hope that does good because, oh, it's going to be so cool to read the rest of them and all this shit. And um, when you hear them talk about it, they like totally like, Oh, space shuttle is like the worst fucking thing we've ever done, and da 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 da. Oh, you and they t no, they totally like trash talk it, and it sucks because I love it. I think it's so fucking good. So um, they're not doing any more of them then. Um, they actually said that they're gonna do two more, but they're gonna release it as one book. I think 
is what they said. So, um, oh, I'll have to look so there's that. that. I've written that down. Fat Bumpe, um, I couldn't hear you. You were moving your computer again. Sorry, the Fat Bumpe, you're reading that at the minute. I just got it last night. Oh, right. Okay. And as I'm you know, sure. last night was kind of hectic and insane. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll talk um, about that later, too. Because, <laughs> guys, Hell guess man. what? This guy, it's, again, 3 o'clock Pacific time. I haven't slept yet. I'm 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 running on fumes, man. Fumes, man. Okay. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> you see what I have to work with here, people. It's hard. Uh, so yeah, but anyway, so yeah, so Breakfast Champions. I'm gonna start reading Fat Vampire. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, yeah, I've just been super. This week's been super busy because we had um. Uh. Bacon come out, and then we had some other stuff go down, which we'll and we'll talk about it later. But yeah, so this week was just a super busy week. Um, but let's get into hey, our. Hang on oh. a minute. Hang on a minute before you rush on. You know, Breakfast of Champions. Yes. Who who are the two main characters again? Uh, Kilgore Trout and Dwayne Hoover. Now Dwayne Hoover is the car salesman, isn't he? And he's verging yes, on being insane. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Have um, you have you met um, Wayne Hubler? No. What about Harry? That's going to get confusing. That's going to get confusing to me, isn't it? It could. It very well could. But it's oh, it, it it's not confusing. It's it's good. Um, we had actually two comments, and I pushed a button, and they disappeared. Oh, what? So maybe I could get him back here. Oh! Um, we have... I think it's Danny Carnage. Nice to finally get to see you both. Yay! Hi, Danny! Thank you so much for your review, Danny. Awesome. Yeah, they're really good. I'm really happy with them. I'm really happy. Yeah, no, that was awesome. Super good reviews. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's so good. What cool. is it? Um, like Doctor Carnage blog? Is it Doctor Carnage? Yeah, Doctor Carnage. Yeah. So um, they're on. They're on slasherton. dot com. Yeah. Like, we have like a little blurb and then a link to the blog. So. Yeah. Check out all his other reviews because his blog's great. He does all sorts of stuff. Really good stuff. Yeah? What was the other comment? <laughs> you they were moving, me. Danny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry. What's that in your it? hand? Are you going to sleep? It's my pen. I'm making notes as I go along. Oh, nice. I, yeah, I miss. Let me just say well. something. I'm gonna just say something. I fucking miss writing with a notebook and pen. I fucking miss it. I used to have notebooks like stacked up everywhere. No, I know, but I ever know. since I got an iPhone and an iPad, I know. And laptops, I it. Ugh, it fucking sucks, dude. And even you on set, it, huh? I love me. Make the world go round, and I can't remember to look at them on my phone. So I've got books all over the place. I'm old fashioned. I haven't got a Kindle yet. She's bad, is not it? But I like I like tactile things. No, I know. I I seriously like if I ever got out all of my notebooks, and I should just have them stacked up around me, so I look like a super Howard Hughesy motherfucker. Speaking of Howard Hughes, look. Have you cut them? I, I trim my nails Back. because you made fun of the last episode and Back because along. she doesn't like it when I go like this. <laughs> With lady nails. Seriously, they grow. <laughs> I have keratin excess and they just fucking grow. All right? My fingers just, you my nails tell. just grow. Yeah. This is the kind of giveaway, isn't it, that you have keratin excess? What, this you thing right here? hair last you shaved your head last week, didn't you? Oh, yeah, totally. 
I, mean, I, I wish I could, like, I, I'll eventually comb it over. Hi, how's it going, everybody? You could, yeah, get, one of, you could get one of those nets, you know, that you wear it like chef wear. A chef wears a neck beard? No, a net. Oh, a net. Going into the Do you want to hear something? Okay, I'm going to let really. you know. Not really, this is going to be gross. Not really. Thanks a bunch. Yeah, now we're down to one viewer. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no! That was fun. See you later, Danny. No, but um, <laughs> no, but I had, I worked at um, a big food place for like one weekend, like a Costco. It was Costco, but you don't have Costco over there. So imagine like your big bulk warehouse shops. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> and I was fucking making, like, goddamn, uh, they weren't egg rolls, but they were, like, little wontons, and I was cooking them in a wok and shit, and having to give people samples, and I had on this stupid green shirt, but I had to wear a fucking hairnet and a fucking, a beard net, and I just looked like I was about to do surgery on a hippie or something. It just looked so ridiculous. Say I would pay good money to say that. I would pay good money. <laughs> <laughs> that was ridiculous, dude. That, that was that was that was a couple years ago. That was good times. But yeah, I, I did it for one day, and I'm like, yeah, I don't think I could do this again. But anyway, so let's jump in face first into lists because you love lists. I love lists. Oh God! So, um, what is the? I was just gonna say, going to sleep for like a month. What's Am I gonna sleep today? for a month? Well, yeah, not after I podcast. drink this. <laughs> what is it? It's espresso. <clears throat> it's a double shot espresso. It's just some mm -hmm. espresso and cream. Nice. Right, super come good. on, we need to. And this is a 24 ounce can, and so just so you know how like large I am, this is a, <laughs> this is a big 24 ounce can. I'm a giant. Uh, okay, that was horribly stupid, but that's sleep deprivation talking. Okay, so what what is our list today? Our list is top five villains, and I'd just like to point out before we start that we had an argument about this, didn't we? Because I was saying, I'm not going to include the main obvious ones. Where'd you go? Like Jason Fortner. <laughs> what? Okay, yeah. She said that we weren't allowed to pick the top three uh, horror movie guys. Which are who? Because I thought Jason, Bohe, Michael uh -huh. Myers. And Freddy Krueger, because yeah. I thought this was like, you know, we want to go a bit more, you know, what's the word? Just be a little bit, more, bit more, a little bit more adventurous, you know, of yeah. the discussion of. Yeah, but my argument well, was I wasn't going to pick, I especially wasn't going to pick Michael Myers in my list anyway. Yeah. One yeah, of so those two, one of those that. two might have just skinched into number five. But yeah. um but you would have put you would okay, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so why don't you hit your number five? Okay. No, I did it first last time. You have to go for your number five first. Okay, I will go to number five first. Are you ready? Yeah. Sugar from No Country for Old Men. Oh, I nearly put him. Did you really? Yeah, I nearly Dude, put him. So good. Just like one that, seriously one of the most threatening. Um what's it called? Javier Bardem. Get me. I remembered his name. I know, I can't believe you did. I can't remember his name. <laughs> I, I always call him Shagur. But That's he was just the most what I call him. Threatening, imposing force, wasn't he? Just on and on and on. There was no stopping him. It was fantastic, and the casting, the amazing. mannerisms, the itself. mannerisms, just like the yeah. way he talked, the way he spoke, and the way he 
carried himself. Oh, just with that so and good. one of the best, the best weapons of all time as well. Can you remember the freaking air cannon? Just like the the yeah. the bolt. Yeah, the bolt that can tackle. <laughs> what that? That's something. Oh, to hold on to in itself, isn't it? Jesus. Oh, just that whole scene in the fucking gas station. That's my favorite. Yeah. Oh, so, so good. good. On the edge of your seat the whole time. I can't believe he's five. You must have some good ones. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your number five? Let's, let's hope he doesn't let us down, folks. Have, have we got any comments? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh well, okay. Uh, we actually have <laughs> a new viewer. We have a new viewer, oh. and we Excellent. probably shouldn't be fucking announcing every time somebody comes in. I mean, it's kind of cool. Hello, hello. Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome. Right. We're, we're, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Who's your number five? Okay, my number five is Annie Wilkes. Annie Wilkes. Kathy Bates in Misery. Yeah? Yep. Now, the thing I like about her... <laughs> what are you laughing at? She's a classic villain. No, no. Danny's like, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Danny. Glad you're still here. <laughs> that was you. That was you insulting the listeners. <laughs> um, Annie Wilk. No, that I is really good. Fact. Well, I love the film in itself because it's... Would you class it as horror? It is horror, isn't Fuck it? yeah, I would call that a horror movie. Yeah. Totally. But it's thriller as well, isn't it? Because it's all that that bit where he gets out, he's, he's stashing all his pills in the mattress and stuff, and then he gets out, doesn't he, out, of, and he falls to the floor, and he's sweating, and he pulls himself along, and he picks the lock, and then you see the cat, he manages to do stuff, and he just knocks the penguin. And manages to just to say, get back into bed. And the first time I watched that, I was like, Jesus Christ, what is he doing? Get back into bed. It was the most, I was sweating. Well, the, the hammer on the ankles. Oh, God, yeah. That's, that's like the worst thing ever. That's so goddamn. But it's, the scary thing about her as a villain is the fact that she doesn't want to do it, really. It's just, it has to be done. It's that matter of fact, you know, it just has to be done because... She's absolutely batshit insane. And well, she doesn't ask, want to hurt him, but he lets her down all the time. Let me ask you a question, because um, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves in case this person comes up, but for instance, like, she is, like, total batshit crazy in that movie. But I yeah. don't think that, like, I think she's, like, a different level of crazy than, like, say, like, a Norman Bates. Yeah. Completely, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. I, I just yeah, think she's she... horrifying. And I couldn't watch Absolutely her in other stuff. With, I couldn't watch her in stuff after that for a really long time without thinking that she was going to fucking get crazy. And like just... yeah, I know. She lives that. She is that character, isn't she? It's terrifying. And it's what? the fact she's like... And she doesn't like the swearing. And it's, you know, the... You know, when she corrects him and she sort of oh. gets mad at him and, oh, and then just drops it again and that face and it's all smiles and what can she do for him and oh, it's absolutely terrifying. Really Speaking good. of smiles with her, um, this yeah. has nothing to do with this, kind of does, but on the spew, um, we were talking about um, her doing that full nude scene and about Schmidt. Oh, God, I forgot about that. In the hospital. Uh-huh. Oh my god, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. She's she's got some acting chops, hasn't she? Oh yeah, dude. So yeah, good times with that. Yeah, okay. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, she's an absolutely fantastic actress anyway. Totally. Okay, what's your number four? My number four is the Joker. Mm. Because I am a firm believer that without the Joker, um, Batman would never have gotten as popular as it did. Ever. Like, that villain made 
I mean, people will say, yeah, well, he made him anyway based on what storyline you follow or whatever. But, yeah. like, without the Joker, like, Batman would be, I think, just super boring. Like, and you could yeah. tell in the movies, because every movie franchise or whatever they do, like, without the Joker, the movies fall kind of flat. Um, yeah, completely. But, I mean, even, He's like, back. the the Frank Miller comics that, uh, yeah. what, what was it that was, one called? We were just talking about it. We were talking about them the other day. Was it, um... Oh, my God, I can't remember. Does anybody know uh, the, the, kill, the Killing Laugh, the... the, the killing. It wasn't the Killing Joke, I don't think. Maybe it was, I, was I don't just know. It's just... Joke. The Joker is, like, the greatest. And, like, honestly, like, I when I found out Heath Ledger was going to play the Joker in The Dark Knight, I was like, that is the biggest bullshit crock of whatever. Because anyway, I love the Jack Nicholson Joker. I thought it was so good. Yeah. But I honestly, the Heath Ledger Joker was so fucking good. Just, like, the best well, villain because he just didn't give a shit. He was just bad to be bad. You know? It was terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. There's something... Like, I remember the scene when he has the um, nurse's uniform on and stuff. And that freaked me out. <laughs> but I didn't even realise at first. And then he just took you like, I don't know what's going on. You're like, oh, no. It's so good. So, it, it's but, seriously hard. for The only reason why the Joker wasn't higher up on my list is because there's been so many variations of him. And some variations well, aren't say, as good. Are you, talk, are you talking of the Joker as a whole? I mean the Joker in character. general. In general. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. if it was just like there was no Joker before Heath Ledger and Heath Ledger was the only Joker, I'm sure it would be farther up the list. But just as a blanket term, yeah. that's number four. Excuse me. What's your number four? Uh, well, I was going to say before that, which of the magazines that we, I mean, magazine, graphic novels did we discuss? That it was Hush? Which were the ones that you said I should read? Oh, the, the Batman oh. ones? Yeah. <clears throat> there was um, the Batman Superman one that, um, I think Frank Miller did that one too. Um, I can't remember what that one was called off the top of my head. Um, but it's the one where he's super old and comes out of being old to go do something and Superman's after him or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, nice, yeah. But the one with Joker, and I don't, I, I guess this is a spoiler, the thing's been out forever, so I don't think it matters, but um, at the end, like, you don't know if Batman's going to kill Joker or take him away, but he has Joker where he wants him, and Joker's just fucking laughing at him. And he's basically saying, like, without, and it was so funny, because I think in this comic he even says, without me, you're nothing. You know, like, yeah. it's just, it's well, so... If you think about it, though, they're such great characters because if you look at them just from an arty point of view, the Batman's, Batman is dark, muted colours, angular, you know what I mean, um, gruff, doesn't speak much, you know, he's like the total opposite, and then you've got... Like the this. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got the Joker, who's the complete opposite, who's like manic, you know, bright colours, yeah. like totally out of control, no sort of um, structure to him at all, anything goes, whereas Batman's so constricted, isn't he, as a character, he never, he never lets his guard down much. Yeah. For realsies. Okay. I'm waffling on, I can tell you, looking at me like, yeah, move along. No, move I'm not. Along. I am... If I want you to move along, you know what I'll do? I'll say, can you freaking move, move along. along, please? <laughs> okay. It's The Killing Joke by Alan Moore and Brian Boland. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Was that Danny again? Uh-huh. Saving my Thank ass. You. Thank you. <laughs> I think it was um, Alan... It was... Alan Moore, who we were saying the other day as well, he did all the um, Watchmen and that, didn't he? And V for Vendetta. Did he? And do League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I think he did, yeah. 
Danny. <laughs> Maybe you should be on the Hey Daddy because you know right? a lot more than me, dude. You know a lot more than me. Get me out of here, quick. Okay, what's your what's your number four? Right, I'm going to hit you with this one now. Oh, it better be good. Clarence Bowdicker. Yeah, you're hitting you know me hard I because I don't know what a Bowdicker is. <laughs> Clarence Bowdicker. I could guess. He's played by Kurtwood Smith, Robocop. He's the guy who blasts into bitch in Robocop. And he is a shit, isn't he? He's one of those just pure shit. Shit motherfuckers. Just, yeah. Yeah. And you just, he's a classic shit. Who you just want to get his comeuppance in every which way you can, and he does. Which is good. Yeah. You know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, you you are uh, not with your first, but this one right here. You found someone who's just a fucking shithead that you just yeah. want to see fucking die. That's like a whole other list for me because like the ones I'm doing right now are just like epic fucking villains. But the, like I'm like oh man, I didn't even think of just shitty motherfuckers. We'll we'll talk about shitty motherfuckers in a little bit because uh, if there if you have any more of them, I don't want to well, ruin them for you. No no no. <laughs> Thinking, I'm thinking. He is a villain, but he's not like a super villain, you know, your classic sort of thing. But he is a shit. No, he's. I mean, that's that totally works. That's totally that just, fits into class- this. Yeah, but I know what you mean. We could have done a shit house. Well, because like from like a writing standpoint, like we, we've talked about villains so far that are fucking crazy. Like, who are just, like, mentally not there. We talked about villains who are, like, the arch nemesis of somebody else, who's, like, without yeah. them, they don't exist kind of thing. But, like, just having a, someone who's, like, fucking just a shitty fucking human being, that's that falls yeah. right in. That's just a different type. Uh, and it's, it's one of those things where... within the villain. Yeah, because, like, if you write somebody who is so fucking shitty and such a fucking horrible human being, no one in their right mind is going to give them any sympathy at all. So no. if you especially have them start out, they're going to start the story out doing something so fucking asinine and fucked, then well, you're like, really oh, does, that's I mean, the bad guy. That scene, you're like, oh my god. You know what I mean? That couldn't be much worse. Totally. Couldn't he? It's, yeah. it's just blasts him to literally to bits. And you're just like, what? And he, he thinks it's great. He laughs at it. He just could not give a shit. And you're just like, oh, right. And you're in there, aren't you? Full speed. You're jumping in there just thinking, I'm watching this to the end because I want him to get splattered to be in every which way you can think. <laughs> Don't you know? And it's Fuck good, you, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's your number three? My number three? <laughs> So my number three is the is the microwave in no I'm just kidding it's uh, Darth Vader. I was totally gonna go for him too. It's just it's just the most like I don't know it's just like a classic villain. But the cool thing about Darth Vader is the the rise and the fall. You know, like it's oh, very God. like like Greek tragedy. You know. But um, he's got so many. He's got more levels to him than that. Yeah, he reaches just, a pinnacle. He, he reaches a pinnacle of evil that you think he can't get any worse. Yeah, he's completely inscrutable, isn't he? With that, with his mask. Well, you that's the whole thing too, because the look—it's it, just so iconic. The design, you know, like, that's incredible from a from a special effects point of view and costuming point of view. Yeah, it's just incredible. Because he still moves as a human and everything, but there's no features. No, you can't get anything from him. He's just a blank facade, isn't he? Standing there looking at you, and then he does the death grip and. He talks. But I think I think it's more than um, like yeah, it's a blank face. But I think it's it's so dark and so just like a fucking evil. Like the Grim Reaper. Something, yeah, something, you know, it's, and it's just, I think a lot of it too, like, especially in the first movie, actually in all of them, but 
they always put him in like a big fucking white hallway or a white room yeah. or something like really bright. Shiny. So, yeah, so he's just like fucking like I'm the biggest motherfucker. I'm wearing a big fucking cape. I have a scary mask and a weird fucking helmet while all these other dudes Such are just wearing imposing. like little hats. Totally. It's just Such an imposing character, isn't he? Fantastic. Although when he's flying his little TIE fighter and he's all I'm gonna shoot people, <laughs> and then it's like, <laughs> and he's like, oh, that was like a little silly, but yeah, you know, they he's all, every, it, everyone has their moments, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but he is fantastic. I was gonna put him on as well, but I, I decided to go a bit more. You're like, I was trying to think a little box. more outside the box. I wasn't trying to be so <laughs> fucking third grade. Uh, I didn't want to be okay. so obvious. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to blow no. your mind with my next two. Okay, so what, who's your number three, Smarty Pants? <laughs> right, I've gone for Max Cady from Cape Fear. Ew! Super good, dude. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's really good. That's a now, super I can't, good pick, dude. The thing is, though, I can't decide which one to go for. I'm, I think... Because I love both versions of the film, but I actually think that Robert De Niro is more threatening yes, by a long sure. way. For sure. It's that scene with Juliette Lewis, with the thumb sucking and that sexual sort of, oh God, it's, it's so attractive in an absolutely terrifying way. Like so you when you, when you were thought, watching it, you were getting all aroused, but scared at the same well, time, thinking, right? No, it's not aroused so much, but it's like, yeah, he's an attra- he is attractive. Would I fall for that? Yeah, I probably yeah, would. Yeah, you would. Do you know what I mean? Have we got Colin? <laughs> uh, yeah, he did be for Vendetta, too. The comments are a little yeah, bit behind you. the live feed, so... Um. Thank You're you. not looking though, so they might be on time. You see, we might be. We're not quite used to looking, are we? Yeah. Okay. It, it's okay. still a little bit behind, but no, okay. like that Cape Fear. Like the thing that's great about that character is that, in all actuality, even though he's a total shitty fucking human being, like he technically has every right to come every after right them. Every right to do it. Exactly. You know, so it's like. You're just like you know he's gonna. He's just like he's he's karma fucking in the flesh, you know. And Ugh. it's the feeling it gets, It's the way it's set out as well, the story, and that you're like these poor people being terrorized by this like crazy madman, blah blah blah. And that's kind of how they want you to feel, don't they? And then you're just like, hang on a minute, you know what a bunch of shit they've let him suffer all this time, you know. And he's mm-hmm. like, what he's doing is when he's like working out. I knew out you were gonna. I knew you were gonna bring that up. I knew you were gonna say, oh, yeah, and he's all working I out his tattoos. You see what I mean, though? But I didn't find that hot. I found that absolutely fucking terrifying. Well, I found and, it and then terrifying. the whole like the whole theme of justice. And yeah. stuff in the artwork. With the scale, the scale. Yeah. yeah, that's what like, I mean. Like you know, oh. like shit's gonna get real, you know? Yeah, completely. He's such a good character. So good. Really good character. Yeah, dude, and that, all the fun. Good shit, dude. I think, I'm, I really very, I'm very impressed. This is very good. <laughs> I just felt like I would be a horrible human being if I didn't put Darth Vader on a list. It's true. But, no, it's good you have. We've got a good mix. No, it's okay. I put the Joker on too. <laughs> okay, uh, so now it's time for my number two, huh? Yeah. Okay, my number two is Killer Bob from Twin Peaks. Oh, what? That's an awesome one. Yep. Why didn't I get Killer Bob? <laughs> what? Why Killer Bob like is just the scariest fucking guy ever. And just with the whole, like, never really knowing who he is and... Just the way, like, Twin Peaks is shot in Fire Walk With Me, just, like, the sounds, the... Everything just oh, makes good. me feel uneasy. So it's more so of a thing that just makes me horrified of him. I mean, I'm a fucking grown-ass yeah. man, and I still freak out. 
Like when Laura walks what? in the room and she's going like this and she doesn't see anything and then she looks all scared and you see Bob behind the dresser and he's like, ah! and then the camera like goes down in his mouth I know. and stuff. It's absolutely terrifying. Like, oh you know, the worst, bit is, the worst bit is when you pointed out to me when he's in the mirror. And I can't even look at the photograph of him in the mirror when, um, oh, when, when the mom down. sits up? Yes. And that's, I can't that, even look at that. And that was so cool because that's the accident. That's how they put that's Frank That's how they Silva worked out who it was going to be. Yeah. Oh, dude, so cool. So cool. Yeah, that picture scares the shit out of me. And her screaming on top of yeah. it doesn't fucking help. You know, Everything like... Everything about it, the way it's shot and the noise. And the fact that Bob screams and, like, it's like that manic sort of screaming in your face. Terrified. Oh, I've just thought of a really good villain. And I've never I'm going to catch you with my death bag. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have an honourable mention at the end of mine? Because I've got a really, really good one. Okay. <laughs> I'm writing it down because it's so fish here and we'll forget before I actually get to it. You're all the bad Dale. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's your number two? My number two. Are you ready? Uh huh. Han Gruber from Dry Hump. Dry Hump. Dry Hump. Dry Hump. <laughs> <laughs> from that great movie, Dry Hump. <laughs> Hans Gruber, Alan Rickman out of Die Hard. Stop <laughs> laughing at your own joke. <laughs> I'm just laughing because you got so like, you said it and then you're like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used okay. to this television. I will laughing. not laugh at my own jokes. That is very tacky. <laughs> and yes. So Hans Gruber. Yeah, he's an awesome buddy. Tell me about you know Hans Gruber. Do you not know who I mean? No, I know who you mean. It's just funny because I think he looks so much different there than in anything else I've ever seen him in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'll give you an, I'll give you another example that he was in, and he was a brilliant villain in that as well. When he was the sheriff of Nottingham in the Robin Hood. Kevin uh, Robin Hood. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, he was I hate, all right, I hate that movie, but he was great in it. He was he was the comic. He held that film together. Alan Rickman. Don't think. I do it for you. I had to listen to that single cassette. Of just that song, I know. the 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 radio version and the extended version that was on the backside, the whole way to Lake Tahoe when I was <laughs> a I knew you were little, because that was the Tahoe. only tape in the car, and because that's the <laughs> longest drive we would take, and we would go all the fucking time, dude. It was like eight hours, anywhere from eight to thirteen hours, depending on weather, and it was just like, oh my god, Brian Adams, are you fucking kidding me, dude? The whole way. The whole way. No, but, but yeah, Hans that's Gruber. a very good... Hans Gruber is an awesome baby. I remember watching that and just thinking, oh, I was just so frustrating the whole time that he was just, he had, he was so cool and sort of such an asshole, but in a cool way. And the way that he just, you know, the, the guy who was always cracking on to um, Bruce Willis's wife, and he was snorting cocaine all the time and stuff. Do you know which one I mean with the beard? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the way he just he just shot him, didn't care about it. And and that at the time when I first watched that, I was like, oh my god, this guy will do anything. He doesn't care. He's just gonna blow him away. Doesn't matter. There's no limit. And it's just he's just good. He's great. Super good. And he's got um, character. Yeah. So he's my uh, number two. That's a good number two. Are you yeah. ready for my number one? Mine's a bit of a disappointment. Come is on. it? Mine is dun 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 It's E. T. I I honestly thought about putting Jaws. Jaws is the fucking the reason why I say Jaws is the fucking greatest villain is because 
that movie made people not go swimming. That movie you know, was so I crazy thought, that it made it made me not want to go swimming in a pool because I thought that thing on the side of the pool that collected the dirt was gonna fucking uh, a motherfucking shark was gonna come out of that. Am, am I missing? Funny, you're right. Go ahead. What? No, I, it's the, brilliant. The picture went away, so I didn't know if you could if I was gone or not. No, no. I, think no that's it. I mean, you know how much I love George. You know how I much know. I do. And when you think about it, nobody, nobody would have that effect, that, like, collective fear that he did. I can't... I, but you're right. I'm sure there is one, but I can't think of anything that made, like, everyone from children to adults just, like, no. not go in the water. Like, they did not go... People would go to the beach and not get in the water after that movie came out. Right. Can you imagine, though, because I, I um, what's the word, challenge anybody at that time to have been swimming without it just crossing their mind, even if they weren't scared, for it to not cross their mind at some point. Well, think, dude, if, you, if, you're, doing it here? if you're in the water and, like, some seaweed hits you or, like, on the leg or something... You'd shit yourself, or, you'd shit yourself wouldn't you? Oh, Instantly. my God, dude. Been there, done that, man. No, I have clever. taken many yeah. a dumps in the ocean. You know? By accident. <laughs> Did you say by accident? I your face. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> I think, by the way, if anybody wants to, to put in their ultimate villain, that would be good. If anyone wants to type in their ultimate villain for us while we're going, that would be fantastic. Yeah, we, got, we have three viewers at the moment. So if anyone would like to leave that in there, knock yourself out. That would be super cool. Who is your number one? Well, I feel a little bit like let down now because you've already called them. But it's specific. Mine is the Joker. Is it really? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Don't be sorry because I'm going specifically Jack Nicholson. I thought you were going to say Jack Cesar Nich Romero. I was about to say, damn, girl. No. <laughs> Jack Nicholson is my ultimate villain. He, he had style and panache. And Jack Nicholson, to me, is like... But you can't get much better than that. No, dude. You're but, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. What does he say? Dance by the... What is it? The classic. Dance by the pale moonlight. And all the... Um, all the songs he does and all that, it's just so, it's, it's such a... Oh, Where does he get all of these marvelous toys? It's toys. Yeah. I know. See, it's just... on honorable mentions, I was going to have Jack Nicholson from The Shining. Yeah, I was just going to say Jack Torrance as well. as another Oh, my God, dude. But, like, when you were talking about just shitty characters, like shitty people, I was, like, thinking, yeah. like... Uh, David Hess in Last House on the Left, the fucking oh, main, God, the main yes. dude, and I spit on your grave, the fucking um, the guy who runs the whorehouse and thriller, like these people you just fucking hate. But as far as like in an action movie, like a really awesome. Did you see um, Philip Seymour Hoffman in the Mission Impossible? I think it's three. No, I can't stand some oh my. so I avoid them like exactly. The but, dude, Philip Seymour Hoffman is so fucking amazing in that movie. I love Philip Seymour Hoffman. I think he's oh, incredible. Actually. So good. Yeah. Yeah, but Jack Nicholson, to me, is pretty amazing in anything he does, which goes without saying, but him as the Joker, to me... You know what else my... Jack Nicholson does? He does uh, Kathy Bates naked in a hot tub. I know. Exactly. <laughs> 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 I don't know what's more so scary. Good. I don't know what's more scary, Jack or Kathy in the in the hot tub, man. <laughs> Neither of them were looking the best at that point, were they? Uh, that was the point, I think. You know. Of course, yeah. It was total let it all hang out with I, legs. I just saw a picture of Jack Nicholson with no shirt on on a boat eating a hoagie, and it was depressing. A big fucking sandwich. Oh, you know, it could, it could He's still... Like, ah. 
was he? Yeah, it, he it was. Still, he can still make it work, Jack Nicholson. Oh, of course he can, dude. Yeah. He, he's, um, he's the guy that Christian Slater wishes he could be. <laughs> so what was your honorable mentions of? Have you done them all? Um, those are the main ones, for sure. Who, who do you got? I had got quite a lot. Oh, Ro- Robert Blake and Lost Highway as well. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. Oh, so good. I had... I've just thought of one there, which was The Woman in Black, but it's not the one that's just come out. It was the TV... The For British viewers, the ITV version. Tele, it's like Mezzo TV film. Holy Super good. Shit, it was the most scary thing I've ever seen in my life. It was horrific. And she was the, she was another one who came screaming in. It wasn't this kind of just, you know, little flashes of her and stuff like that. She was really, oh, horrible. Um, I've got Drago, Rocky IV. Would you class him as a villain? Or is he just a Fuck yeah, he's a villain. Oh. Oh, he dude. is, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he's a villain. For yeah. sure. This is a good... I've got the Wicked Witch of the West, because she scared the holy shit out of me when I was little. Very good. Absolutely yeah. terrified me. I've got the Kitty Catcher out of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Do you remember him? Because <laughs> <laughs> he scared the shit out of me. I had... Uh, hang on. Baby Jane... Betty Davis, out oh of whatever God. happened to Baby Jane. She was absolutely so good. that film. Yeah. That would um, make me automatically go uh, Dr. Pretorius from Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. Like, that's a really good one, too. One. Yeah. I mean, there's really so many good ones. Reverend Harry Powell, out, um, out of Night of the Hunter. Have you seen that one? He is horrific. Uh, Robert Mitchum. You've got to see that film. It's beautiful, but it's terrifying. Proper black and white. It was 50s, I think. You can let you can correct me if I've got that wrong, which I probably will have done. Um, Frank Boo, Blue Velvet. Totally, totally. That was another one. Uh, Baby, one stop. And Inglorious Bastards. Yes. Oh, because I've never God. been so scared in all my life with that scene where he's smiling the whole time and you are on the edge of your seat thinking, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. He's going to kill everybody. He's so good in that. Yeah. He's such a good actor. Um, and the last one, is that the last one? I think so. I put Ed Rooney, the headmaster out of Clarence Bre- Bueller. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember it? Yeah, totally good. And then we both would say Jason. Yeah, Jason Voorhees is the number one of all time. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You didn't say number one, though, did you? What? You were sure about number one. I wasn't sure about... Would you have had him as number one? Like, as far as best villains go, I wouldn't put him... Because, like, there's this whole, like stupid fucking psychology thing. Like, is he really a villain? I know what you mean. He's just like... He's just like a, mach- he's just like a machine. He's like yeah. a force of nature, isn't he? For sure. Yeah. It's like saying... Because, like, Pumpkinhead is also a super great... But Pumpkinhead's not really a villain. Pumpkinhead comes to do something and then goes home. You know, it's like... He's like, he's like a puppy. Somebody yeah. is like... Like, like Stan know, Winston's hot. inside of him. No, I don't mean that, and you know it. <laughs> but it's, uh, he gets called to, to perform a function, doesn't he? So yeah. He's not doing it by his own accord. But if you compare them to Darth Vader, and co- compare the sort of scariness, because it's all power and control, and all in it, he's got everything in his grasp, hasn't he? And that's, yeah. that's what's scary. Definitely. Anyway, and I think then Freddy, I, I, you, yeah, you could go Freddy too, just because like the first real slasher 
anti-hero, like, you know, yeah. like, not really an anti-hero, but, like, just someone with some charisma, you know? Freddie had, when you think about out of the three, I'm not a massive Freddy Krueger series fan, but yeah. I absolutely love, I would put the first movie up there, right up there. Because no, him him as a character him. is amazing, but yeah. some of the movies were yeah. just so like not amazing. Well, here's another thing, like because honestly, like um, Otis and Captain Spaulding from yeah. oh, House of a Thousand Corpses well. and Devil's Rejects, yeah. I think they're amazing yeah. characters, super amazing. But I, I just say it before. yeah. Well, high five. Mm. Good job. <laughs> that, was a, that was a good list. Um, so uh, we kind of went... Let me see. I don't know what how long we've been doing. How long you know, have we been on? I don't know, but let's go... We'll skip the the newsy part and just talk about the, um, the stuff. Because um, there is some stuff to talk about. So... Um, this, I guess, would be where... Zoe doesn't understand! <laughs> With Zoe! Okay. Okay, everybody. This is the section where I like to be... <laughs> I'm saying it like a planet, but I genuinely don't understand most of the things that Creep talks about. So we have a section each week where Creep will... I will ask the question of a particular thing that I've particularly don't understand because there are generally quite a lot of them and I'll ask him and he'll do his best to, un to explain it to me okay so I'd just like to say this I keep hearing about Amazon algorithms what are those I don't understand <laughs> dude you are so I think good at that, that I think I'm not being funny. I think we find that a lot funnier than anybody else does. <laughs> but it's worth it. So whatever. I doubt it, dude. I bet like anyone who knows you is probably sitting there right there going, Wow, dude. <laughs> and you just crack me up on that. <clears throat> okay. I tell you I tell you what. I tell you what, I'm up for an Oscar this year. That's all I'm saying. If I'm not, it's a scandal. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll get a Carry BAFTA. On. Explain these, a BAFTA. Explain these Amazon algorithms, please, Creep. What are they? Well, Amazon algorithms, okay. Um, <clears throat> no, but if if you are um, someone who is trying to publish your own book right now, or um, you you are wanting, or you're thinking about, because a lot of people have been. I'm going to do something real quick, and it might make a bunch of racket. Okay. Um, because we've been publishing stuff weekly with um, my, like, shorts and novellas and stuff, and then we're doing the Slasherton books every month, there's a lot of people who I know who are writers who keep asking me, like, you know, like, um, how are you doing this? What's going on? And... Um, how do you make money on Amazon? How do you get people to notice your book? Blah, 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 blah. Um, and whatever. Actually, let me just check real quick because I'm trying to hit a certain number. <gasps> 99. Okay, Woo! so check this out. Today's the last day you could get bacon for free, okay? And we just had this goal. I'm like, I, I'm like, I want to get 100 books gone. That's that's all I care Shane about right pimp. now. I Shane just pimp. Shane pimp. Shane pimp. <laughs> one more. If you haven't gone on Amazon yet and downloaded Bacon for free, just do it so we could get to hundred. It's fucking free. Don't even okay. read it if you don't want to, but download it. Well, you should read it. It's actually quite good. Yeah, of course. But, um, and then when you when you do read it, go ahead and leave a review on Amazon. Okay, back to this. It's, it's better than quite good, everybody. It's amazing. Aw. And it's not a cookbook. It's not a cookbook. I swear to God, if I get a bunch of comments from people going, I thought this was a cookbook. I'm really mad. This book sucks. Nobody, I didn't even read it. Our, 
our, our viewers are far too clever for that, so it's not going to be any of these people. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank God. Okay, so anyway, Amazon algorithms. Um, basically, yeah. Amazon... Um, Amazon does this. If okay, if you are putting a book, okay, this is what I tell people because this is where I was going before um, I got all excited about bacon. Amazon, um, there's a lot of people who want to know more about how to publish your books on Amazon and how to do all this stuff with um, KDP Select, which is the Kindle Direct Publishing, and how Amazon rates your books. Because if you go on any book thing, it'll say like. Oh, this book is ranked um, two hundred thousand da, 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 in the top one hundred or general Kindle where stuff. You, where do you actually find the ratings for these? Because I don't know. About um, it's under the publisher. I don't understand. It's it's under the publisher information. So it'll be like the picture of the book, and then you scroll down, and it'll be like this is what the book's about, and then you scroll down, and it's like the book is this many pages. This is the ISBN number. This is this. Blah, oh, blah, blah, right, blah, blah. Exactly. And then the very bottom, it's like, this is what the book is ranked. Right. So that ranking is how people are able to see your book. So the way you figure out how that even works, or how Amazon figures it out, is they have these algorithms based on certain things. And we're going to get into those. And because it's such a big thing, we're only going to do like one bit a week to try to... That's a good idea, because we've got to keep it... Seriously, because, you know, like, honestly, right now... I already too. Exactly. Because whenever somebody yeah. asks me, like, what should I do, because I did the same thing. There was this guy I knew who was writing a book, and um, I don't even know if he put it up yet, but he was writing a book. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, used to, I had some books published, and, you know, how do you do that? And he's like, well, what you need to do is there's this podcast called The Self-Publishing Podcast. And those guys are the shit, and they know all their stuff and everything. So what I've been doing, I've been listening to them, and it's a, an amazing show, and I've learned so much just listening to their show and everything. Uh -huh. And so I've been pushing people to that site, and then they come back, and they're like, hey, those guys are really smart, and they know a lot of tech stuff, and I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. That's so. me. That's exactly how I feel about it. Like, it all sounds great, and I catch this, and I'm thinking, yeah, that sounds brilliant, and then they say something, and I'm like, no, nah, I've lost it, I've lost them, they've lost me, <laughs> you know so, what I mean. So basically, one of the reasons why we wanted to do this show, um, which, you know, we kind of model a little bit after that show, is just, in as layman's terms as possible, try to explain what you have to do and what there is to do on Amazon because Amazon is the the biggest e-commerce tool there is. They are um, the third largest search engine in the world. Like Amazon is what you need to do and it's it's one of those things whether you like it or not if you want to sell a book and have it be successful you have to have it on Amazon. You have to. So you, in order to do this stuff, you have to kind of find out how things work over there. Now, um, the algorithms are set up in a way <clears throat> where there's a, there's a lot of lists on Amazon, and you like lists. What, what, what is an algorithm before we start? An algorithm is something, um, let's, what should I call have it? I put, have I dropped you in it, it then? It, no, no, no. It's like it's like uh, being able to watch something over a period of time and seeing how it acts naturally, let's say. And then based on how that acts, you could kind of, not necessarily predict, but you measure stuff based on a, a window of what it did in that window. And then you base everything else against that kind of thing. Right. So everything in this window, the ups and the downs and all this other stuff, that's how they will get their rank numbers. Okay? So when we talk about the list that they have, okay, what's that look for? That that look is one of those ugh. This is starting to sound <laughs> like I'm learning something. 
No, 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 what did you get confused about? Nothing. I sort of understand that bit, but generally, I don't because to me, an algorithm is a bit. You know, when you have like yes or no. What are you laughing at? Is there a comment? Yeah. Um. Mine is Steve from Gutter Balls, a world class asshole from Danny. <laughs> <laughs> the assholes have it. Yes. You see, there's a whole different level, isn't there? Absolute asshole. Good choice. Um, what was I going to say? You were talking about algorithms. Uh, algorithms where you have like, right, here's your question and you have yes or no. Depending on yes, you go to that option. Depending on that option, you go to something else. That's yes. what I understand. As an algorithm. Yeah. So how does that apply to Amazon? Is that what the computer will be doing, technically, by all the search things that you do? Technically, but it, it comes in from, from searches, from purchases, from yeah. um, genre. They're just collecting all... They're collecting all this stuff, and with all of that information, they're basically making numbers. Okay? Yeah. Okay. And they put everything up against each other. So, And the thing about Amazon that's crazy is that those numbers, according to Amazon, I don't know how accurate this is, but those numbers are updated hourly. 24 hours a day, hourly. I can imagine that's perfectly true. Can you imagine the, the amount of people and the work and the money that goes into those figures? It will so easy to do that. Because it I, makes it worth a while. I think that there's either this crazy think tank of all of these people who, if they weren't doing this, they would be, like, building bombs for, like, Iran oh, or something like that. Yeah. Or something... it's fucking Hal from 2001 or something, and it's, like, <laughs> some dude's, like, it's, like, hello, Jonathan, what are you doing today? I'm going to, oh, okay. And just, like, a total, like, really smart robot that could probably take <laughs> over the world if it wanted to. Because this is, like, really, really crazy shit. And we are learning this as we go. So one of the things that... <clears throat> you were learning it as you go. I'm Dude. Yeah. Right, let's, okay, so let's keep it... <laughs> let's keep it. So, so basically what I'm trying to say simple. is... Is what we're going to be doing over the next few weeks is talk, picking one topic out of the different things that they use to make the algorithms and talking about how to how to hone in on that and use that for your benefit okay. as a writer, yeah. okay? As a self-published writer. Are you doing writer. that today or are you just... No, today we're just kind of going over the, the gist General of thing. Because okay. one of the things that we ran into, and again, this is... There's a lot of authors out there who have had success on Amazon. And if you are watching this show, I don't know why you would be unless you really like guys dressed up like raccoons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we need help, too. You have no know? sleep. I, I haven't slept. And um, <laughs> should we talk about that right now? Because one, well, one, one of the things you need to... Okay, go ahead. Has it got something to do with algorithms? Because we're supposed to be staying on the point. No, Mental this, person. this is a part of it. Okay, yes. because some okay. of the things that are important in finding what your what the algorithms are is that you have to be able to pick good genres. Okay, genres yes. that fit your book. Now, the way this is, th this is what we were discussing, wasn't it? Because I was saying to you about SPAC. And we were saying how uh, you were saying about we have pro there must be a problem with the categories that we've picked because it's not getting as many viewings as other as exactly. the ones you've been putting in. Yeah, and this is it's a not question. Getting the in the ranking. This is a question that we both have. So if anyone watching this has an answer to this, it would be awesome. But basically, yeah, because fantastic. because our Slasherton books are in paperback and ebook. When we started, we did the books through CreateSpace, and the hard copy comes out first, and then the ebook comes out after. Now, when you put a book up on Kindle, so like say Bacon, Bacon, I get two um, 
genres to pick from. So with Bacon, it's under, I think, fiction, general fiction horror and general fiction satire. But both of those um, categories are under Kindle because it's an ebook. Yeah. Now with the Slasherton books, we have one category that's book um, something horror, like uh, book general fiction horror. And then we have a second category, because you're only allowed to have two categories, that's Kindle edition. Um, I think the Kindle oh, edition's okay. under humor. So we're only getting one. So when people are looking so up ebooks. Get, so you only get one search engine per paperback and per Kindle. Yeah, but if, but if we didn't have the Kindle edition, we would have two. Yeah, you would have two categories for, for it to be on. The paperback. And if we didn't have the paperback, we would have two search categories for the ebook. So well, that's right. why our the Slasherton books are getting better reviews. Um, we're selling more of the Slasherton books than we are of the standalone novellas and stuff. But the novellas and everything like that are higher ranked than the Slasherton books. So, like, one of the lists that we need to push for for the Slasherton books because of that are the popularity lists. And so we'll talk about that on a different day. Of okay. Different, different list. Um, so this is all to do with the algorithms, isn't it? That yes. Where they would show up and... Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Because even your categories decide, because if you notice, it's like um, Unsane Sam, when we did the free run with Unsane Sam, yeah. that book got to like 2,000 something in general fiction, Yeah. but it got to number three in satire, because yeah, satire is crazy. a smaller category, there's less a competition in it. So, but your algorithms, the way we got to number three is because of all the stuff that it's calculating and all this other shit. But because we got to number three in a small category, that helps the book as a whole. Do you see what I'm saying? So how does that affect the sales, though? The fact that more people will just generally notice it when they're searching? The thing that you want more than anything is to end up on the front page of Amazon. Now what I've been trying to figure out, what I've been reading up on and all this other stuff, because Amazon is the best e-commerce site in the world, it changes. The front page of Amazon is different for every person who goes on because the front page is based upon what you've been viewing and what you've been purchasing. Yeah. So even if you go to like nobody the book else, you were telling me nobody else, nobody else has the ability to do that, do they? Have that as personal um, a preferences for that every individual that logs on. Definitely has a because recommendation. Because what we were what we were talking about, and I can't remember if this was on um, the self publishing podcast or if this was in that one of those books I was reading. I can't remember, oh, but um, <clears throat> it's all fucking falling into like a muddy thing. <laughs> but with um, all of this, like bookstores, when you go into a bookstore and you see like the new James Patterson book on a table, and there's like twelve thousand James Patterson books there, and you walk yeah. in and you're like, "Oh, I want to buy that." That table has to be purchased or rented by the publisher. So yeah, and all you were, those you were saying to me as well, the ones that are facing outwards. Yeah, when you go down an aisle, purchased. when you go down an aisle in a bookstore, the ones that are face out instead of spine out, that you have to pay. The publishers have to pay for that. So you have to when, pay more so they they get noticed more. Totally, and if you are even going to the Barnes and Noble website, the front page of their website is still paid spots from publishers. Okay. So if you go to their website, you're going to have fucking The Hunger Games, maybe Twilight still. I don't know if people are still fucking buying that. And, um, <clears throat> I don't know, some other fucking book by some fucking 
Fifty Shades of Grey or some fucking Game of Thrones shit or some fucking shit. But that would be Game what the front page awesome. looks like. Yeah. I, I know you like Game of Thrones. You like it so much that you didn't even read it and you just had some guy on a plane tell you everything that happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but I, I think this is on self publishing podcast, but they were talking about um how Amazon is completely different all the time. But the one thing that's not different is the top one hundred list or the popularity lists or the movers and shakers or um the the hot list, like the list that of like in the last thirty days what's what's new and what's awesome, what's selling good that's brand new. So basically, um, I'm going to totally let the cat out of the bag right now about what I've been doing the last 12 hours, okay? So... <clears throat> I know, dude. Okay, so the reason why I didn't sleep <laughs> is because um, I was listening to, I think the self-publishing... Yeah, I was listening to self-publishing podcasts last night, and I was reading a book on, um, it was a Let's Get Visible, like a book about how to get your book noticed, basically. And so I'm listening to the show, I'm reading this, I'm listening to the show, I'm reading this, and I was at this one part where they were, the show was talking about keywords, and the book was talking about keywords. And I'm like, okay, and I'm just hearing all this stuff about keywords, I'm reading all this stuff about keywords, and they were saying how, like, um, you know, keywords are really important. You have to make sure that your keywords are, like, the best keywords possible and words that are the most used. And this isn't the first time that um, something like this has been brought up to me, but I just never thought about it for books before, which is fucking stupid. But when we did Bam the Ghost, that, um, like, kind of mockumentary ghost hunting show, the reason why the... The, the real title of the movie is Paranormal Ghost Hunters Case Files Bam the Ghost because all of those words were big Amazon keywords. And so we're like going, oh, yeah, this movie will probably just go straight to VOD. Let's just try to get a bunch of keywords so it'll, like, pop up really high in the search engines. And the movie hasn't been edited yet, so it's not out yet, but hopefully those <laughs> words will still be worth a damn when the movie's <laughs> <Run out>. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, paranormal so is what's up? Paranormal is always relevant. Mm -hmm. Fine. So um, I went on Amazon and I was just like fucking around in the search bar to see like what words people are searching or whatever, and I just like fucking clicked in the fucking thing, and the first thing that popped up was free Kindle books. And I was just like, oh, my God, that's awesome. Okay. And then I was, like, reading that, like, if you have a book or whatever and you have keywords and stuff like that, you need to make sure that your keywords match the book and not that it's just a popular keyword. So yeah. it fucking, like, 1.30 in the morning, I got this bright idea that um, I was going to write a book called free Kindle books. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think it's a good idea still, but last night I thought it was like the greatest thing ever in the history of the world. <laughs> and I looked it up, and there wasn't a book called free Kindle books. And I was shocked. Don't so, I'm, <laughs> so I was trying to figure out a way, like, okay, how can I write a story that that, that, that has anything to fucking do with? So I wrote this really, like, crazy, like, high anxiety filled <clears throat> story about a guy who wants every book on Amazon to be free so he like breaks into the back end of Amazon and puts all the books for free and downloads all these free books and then the government and Amazon come after him and all this shit so um I fuck it. I'm like, okay, I got to do this now because the collective consciousness is going to fucking read my thoughts and then they're going to fucking write the book and I'm going to be shit out of luck. So I fucking stayed up all night writing the book. Can I just, can I just mention that you can, I can't tell you. I can't tell you what it is yet because the collective consciousness will get it before I have a chance to do it. And I was like, okay. Someone's had too much coffee. Oh, so <laughs> much coffee. Way too long on his own. 
So much coffee. So anyway, so um, I finished. It's a it's a short story. It's like um, around five thousand words. It's not huge or anything like that, but it's a little bit bigger than Unsane Sam and everything. So I'm like, okay, this is cool. So I I knocked it out in a night, and I'm like, okay, I gotta do the fucking um, the the Kindle dot moby html shit to make it a kindle book or whatever so i go mm-hmm. into my notepad plus plus which typically is a very good program and i like it a lot but what happened was i found out i've been saving my files wrong this whole time and all of my html that i've been copying and pasting and putting into my next book and all this stuff was gone and then the site that i went uh-uh. to originally to get um, all my HTML coding, um, I guess the guy didn't pay his bill or something like that, and his site was down or something. So then it was like a double fuck you, and it was like, I mean, what time was that? That was like 7 o'clock in the morning. I was fucking pissed. I was freaking out. And I'm like, oh, my God, they already know. Everything's fucking falling apart. Uh, and I was like was, was my mom saying, yeah, maybe it's Amazon. They've sussed you out, and they're just not letting you do it, and all this kind of stuff. It's like, ah, I'm going okay, crazy. I, I just want the record to show that the whole time I was pitching this idea after um, the book was written and all this stuff, Zoe's like, "I don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> I, I think, I think that." I, I don't. I don't know if you should be doing this. Maybe you should change it to Amazim. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I'm get outside to get really. Do you think this is a good idea? I'm getting. I'm getting nervous. I'm getting. We're gonna get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, Zoe made the super cool like freaking. Nazi totally. Germany cover yeah, for it, so it looks all scary, but it's all free Kindle he books. Me, he made me do it. He makes me do all sorts of bad things. So anyway, oh, God. I, I don't know I, what time was, uh, and then like there was just this one little thing that kept fucking up the ebook, and I kept uploading it, and it, like my paragraphs weren't indenting. And I was all pissed off about that. And people um, aren't going to understand what any of that means unless you we explain that. Okay, when you, ma- when you make when a you make a Kindle book, coding. when you make a Kindle book, like a .dot mobi file that you upload for Kindle's ebook store <clears throat> or Amazon's ebook store, you can't just upload a Word document. Like, if you wrote your book in a Word document and you have the formatting all perfect and you have, like, your chapter headings all big and your, um, like, page breaks and your indentions where the paragraphs start, all that shit has to be thrown out. And you have to basically... You're basically building a website, okay? You're building a web page that has clickable links and all this other shit, and you have to pull all of your text from your document after you do your style and your your style settings for your HTML, which is all your like uh, greater than HTML, less than, greater than style. No, no, I know. And it's it's fucking HTML coding. Like if you've ever like um, or if you remember what MySpace used to look like and you would make a MySpace page, and you'd go, I want to make my yeah. MySpace page look pretty, and then you go to the MySpace editor, and you have to, like, you pick all these colors and all this shit, and then you had to copy and paste this big, long fucking thing of all these letters and s- symbols and all this shit, and then it makes your website. Well, that's the exact same thing you have to do See, to, I, to I make an email. I don't understand. I don't understand why they can't think of an easy way to do it because if I was writing an e-book I wouldn't have a chance of self-publishing it. I have no, no idea I have no idea why it has to be so fucking complicated because no, like when really, e-books first started the first three books I wrote I made available in e-book format and all they did was take my PDF and you could download it. Does Amazon not offer a Kindle download so that you can convert it? 
I'm sure they do. There are converters that you could get that, like, you just put your book in and no, it just, fucking does it for you. No, just on Amazon. Just on Amazon. There's, like, a, go- there's a Kindle thing that you can use, but the problem is is that they're not accurate. They're, like, you're still going to have... You might have a fuck up here. Your links might not work. Um, something okay. might not be working right, and if you don't know how to fix it, then yeah, you're so stuck with a fucked up want, book. So basically, if you want it how you want it, then you've got to know what you're doing, really. Or if you've you just want to know what you're doing. You've you just know? got to delve into it a bit more, don't you? Yeah. They, this is so, it's just a fucking pain boring. in the dick, dude. It's is that so... message? I heard, a, I heard a beep. Uh, no. My phone's just going oh. off. But yeah, long story short, it's just a pain in the ass, and um, I'm getting more confident with it, although what happened today was not cool at all, and I was very unhappy with it. But, um, yeah. but long story short, if I submitted the book to Amazon and all that stuff, so as long as they don't read it or look at the title... Yeah. I'm pretty fucking confident that that book's going to be in the top 100 within a week. <laughs> because it's going to come up on everybody's search. Like, free Kindle books. I mean, I've looked that up a thousand times. Like, just me. Like, just, like, wanting free books. Like, I'll type free, and then it'll say Kindle books. It'll just pop up. Like, I, it's... So, I mean, it's genius. I'm very proud of myself right now. So hopefully, yeah. Well, you should be. It it works. You totally should be. This is the thing because I just don't. I'm relying on you because this is all crazy stuff. It's just. It's like I don't know. It's like being back in physics class again and not having a clue what he's talking about. Well, at least you took physics <laughs> class. <laughs> Tried. I'm just. I just want to I mention didn't. here. I've got a message on um, the podcast page from Nicola, my lobster. (laughs) (laughs) And she's saying, I'm watching you two nattering away and I can't make a comment. I was the new viewer you mentioned. Um, I don't know if she's still there. I think you have to subscribe to the channel. So you have to subscribe, ah. I think. I'm not 100% on that, but I think you have to subscribe. Uh, well, that's what you have to do, Nick. It's just you like following subscribe. someone on Twitter or liking something on Facebook. It's just the YouTube version well, of that. Right, okay. Is that so we have to do that every time? So if people are listening, they've got to be subscribed to this. I don't know because I haven't ever done it before. Why don't me and you go find some Hangout gr- videos and try to catch them live and see what we could do? And just, like, go, we're just oh, leaving comments trouble. to see if it works. <laughs> we don't give two shits about your show. It's fine. Come watch our show <laughs> and don't give two it. shits about ours. <laughs> but anyway, so... Um, Say hi to Nick. And hi to Sharon if you're still watching. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Our we viewers have been going. Watching. Our viewers have been going from one to five. Can you see the viewers on your screen? No, I don't know. Abo- how to do above that. the main picture, it says viewers. And now that I'm talking about them, we have zero. So that's fantastic. Oh no! They all oh, now gone. we have two. So it's been going from one to five the whole time. How's it? Yeah. So I don't know how that works, but anyway. Um, okay. as far as what so, we're doing, okay, go ahead. No, no, we're on to what we're on to now. Um, it's just, so just briefly mention what that whole discussion, um, how that tied into algorithms, please. That whole discussion ties into algorithms because one of the things that uh, algorithm the algorithms look at are your keywords and they look at your um, categories. Categories. So. Um, <laughs> So, uh, picking categories. Like, seriously, if any of you want to, uh, are looking at writing books to put on Kindle or something like that, I swear to God, 
go watch or watch or listen to the self-publishing podcast. The thing that makes it tricky is that Amazon has changed so many things so often that if you listen yeah, to some okay, back okay. episodes, some of the shit they're talking about isn't relevant to it right. It doesn't apply anymore. Yeah. yeah. We, you've noticed it's that not quite nearly, a lot, haven't you? It's not nearly as bad as I thought, but yeah. I think it's just like if you're trying to crack the code, if you're into like the Da Vinci code and like you're like, oh, I'm going to crack the code, then you're going to have <laughs> so much fun trying to figure out fucking algorithms on Amazon and how to fucking make your book do well. It's a, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's like you're fucking James Bond, but not as <laughs> sexy, but smart kind of thing. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about anymore. But, um... No, okay. You all know you I don't. Know. You're really bad at this. Um, <laughs> thanks so much. I appreciate it. No, but, um... So basically, You're really good. I don't know how you do any of it. So I mean, total. But the whole thing confused, here is, if we're not giving you the answers you're looking for or whatever like that, if we could at least inspire you to try, like if this stupid dumb fuck with fucking black shit on his eyes could figure out how to fucking <laughs> HTML code a fucking dot mobi file, maybe I can do it. Because I fucking yeah. can't do hardly anything. You know, like I you have can a do hard more time. Than me, but it's all trial and error, it's, isn't it? You like you were saying how today, many times when you find, I, how many times did I do yeah. that fucking file today? Fifteen. It was more than that, but it was just like I kept fucking it up, and I'm like motherfucker, and I'd have to go back and I'd fuck it and up. And then again. in the end, you got it right, and you were like, "Oh, thank God for that!" And I was like, "Brilliant!" And you were like, "I have no clue how I did it." But the point is, you would still get to that point eventually because it's trial and error, isn't it? You knew I the kind of various no things you had to idea. try. I have no yeah. idea what I did different than the time before. But it yeah. just it worked that time, so I'm not going to fucking argue with it. No. But So if, it. even if we're not giving you the answers you want, basically we're doing this show and you're going to see us every week figuring out what the fuck we're figuring out and seeing us grow and all this other shit. So let it inspire you. If you have questions, let us know. But I'm just like so like, fucking into it now, dude. Yeah, it's exciting. And you need to get onto the podcast page on Facebook um, and leave us some questions. And we'll we'll try and answer them as best we can, won't we, for next time. For sure. And like if you have you want, or if you have questions or any kind to, of feedback. If you have questions about our books and just, like, yeah. more fan questions or more, like, hey, I really liked Unsane Sam. Are you going to do another one? Hey, what's up, sack, sack? You know, like, anything like that. Ask those, too. But if you are an aspiring writer or a writer who's been writing forever but never wanted to get into ebooks, or you know everything there is to know about ebooks, and I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, call me out and help me because I fucking need help. I'm I'm saying it right now. Is, yeah, we want we want to kind of. You're doing really good, though. You're doing so good at learning. The thing is that we we're perfectly open about saying that to people, aren't we? You know, we're perfectly. That's the position that we're in, and we want to be utterly available for people to contact and to be able to talk to and to discuss things and work things out together. You know, to be available. That's the main thing. So, and there's also, I mean, you love people to get in touch and email you and stuff. What? Hundreds? A hundred. Yay, little Woo. victories. Yay. Well done. Yay. <laughs> so, um, you could still get bacon for free today if you get it before midnight. And um, hopefully, uh, uh, free Kindle books, the book, will be available within the next couple hours. And, Is it not out um, yet? I actually haven't looked. I should probably look, huh? I bet it is. Why don't you tell, just tell, everybody? tell everyone how to subscribe to the newsletter? And let's see if um, we can do this right way. this week. Oh, God. <laughs> we can't, because you're better at talking than me. Um, the best way to go to the newsletter is to go to Hang on, Facebook. You're better with the addresses than me. 
If you go to um, Facebook.com slash Slasherton, there yeah, is a that, button with a little envelope and a rainbow. And if you click that, you could get the Slasherton called, newsletter. I think it's called Slasherton News still, isn't it? I think so. And you go on there, and it's the Gorzette. So you get all the news. And if you sign up for it as well, you can sign up for it on Slasherton.com. There's um, a way to sign up for it there, isn't there? So you get a... Yep. a a regular email of all the kind of things that we're going to be doing, all the things that are going to be coming up, just general news, competition. In fact, um, that we just got a new website. So, slashroom.com. Yeah. If That's you haven't seen it in the last couple of days, it's totally revamped. It's actually... It really good. We did a really good cool. job on it, didn't you? <laughs> Um, have, you added, <laughs> have you added the new social networking bit yet? No, I have not done that yet. You, you won't have had time yet, have you? I haven't done um, shit. But um, if you... you podcasting all afternoon. I know. Um, if you are on Goodreads, find us on Goodreads, because we're both on there, and we're both having fun picking books and rating books and all that other stuff. But um, just to give you an idea since we were talking about the algorithms real quick, I'm on the bacon page and um, under product details is where it's located and it says Amazon bestsellers rank. Um, we are number 3,299 in the free Kindle store. But bacon oh, is nice. number seven in satire. And the mapping for that category is Kindle Store, Kindle Ebooks, Humor Entertainment, Humor, Satire. So each one of these subcategories, your competition gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, which is really a good thing because now not only are am I is is Bacon seven in satire, but it's probably like twelve in humor. And probably like fifteen yeah, really or twenty cool. in humor and entertainment. So I'm getting rankings in each one of these categories, and that boosts everything. These are the these are like some of the things that um, they that tracks everything. If that makes sense, yeah. does that make sense? We'll we'll get yeah. into more detail with it next week for sure. We'll pick one thing. Maybe we'll ju just do. Um, the top 100 or whatever, but um, let me see. Um, free Kindle books. Can I just say that Danny's just said here that um, you have to sign in with a Google account to be able to leave comments. There you go. Thank you, Danny. I know. Gosh. Danny's awesome. <gasps> Free Kindle Books is fucking up on Amazon. <laughs> Remember my mum's listening to this. Oh, hello, mother. <laughs> that was so creepy. <laughs> what? Okay. Mother? Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's fantastic. Right, so, stop. we're going to have to stop waffling because we've gone yeah, we, we, an hour and a half. Yeah, I don't know what the hell is going on anymore. So basically, sign up for the newsletter at Slasherton.com or Facebook.com slash Slasherton. Uh, you could follow the Slasherton stuff at Kill Sat Kill uh, or on, on Instagram Twitter. at, did I say Twitter? No. Okay, I did um, Twitter. Instagram is official Slasherton. Uh, you could follow me on Twitter at Creeperson. You could follow Zoe on Twitter at Brit Zombie Girl, and um, go to Facebook and um, go to the podcast 451 page. And um, I don't know. However, you become a fucking part of that. How do you do that? Please. What you just? I think we have to do that, don't we? Can people leave? Um... Oh yeah, people say they want to join, and then we say, "Yeah, you could come join or whatever." Yeah, but um, but please do that, people. And thank you so much, uh, Danny and Sharon and Nick and. I'm, I think I think Sharon's husband might be watching as well, so thanks to Kev as well. Yay! That's Yay. really cool. I appreciate it. And if you guys know anything, yeah, help us. Yeah, and please just 
just anybody who's watching this throughout the world. Oh God, terrifying. Oh God, I can just hear my my dog just nearly killed my mum's dog again. All right. So, oh yeah, um, um, stealth comes out on Tuesday. So be prepared for that. Oh yeah, this is the main thing. Be prepared for. I was I was actually saying that to you, Zoe. Be prepared for that. I know. Stealth comes out on Tuesday. You have like twelve hours to finish it. I'm frantically drawing as we <laughs> not as we speak, but as soon as we get off. And then on um, Friday, speaking of getting off, um, you could catch gonorrhea for free all next weekend. Yay! That was pretty I filthy. Think. It was filthy. Yeah. I you off, though. All right. Okay, do we have anything else to mention? Nope, I think that's it. Okay. So wubba, 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 goodbye, God bless. Bye. Bye.